Hello, today we are going to install the Docker Linux containers technology on Ubuntu 24.04. I've searched on Google Ubuntu 24.04 Docker and I get this result from Vulture Docs which goes through the process of installing docker minus ce dev package from the official dev repository from docker.com the question is why don't we install using packages from ubuntu from the ubuntu official repository why do we install packages from the docker official dev package repository that's because the Ubuntu and Debian dev packages that exist in the official repositories of Ubuntu are too old. Search and the package is named docker-io. No such package. Docker Compose 2.24 Docker dot I dot so not Docker minus IO but Docker dot IO. So the version available in Ubuntu 24.04 is 24.0 and the version on docker.com is 26. So let's use the newest version with uh, packages from the docker.com dev repository. This will also make it easier for us to eventually remove Docker and all of its dependencies if we want to not no longer have Docker installed on our uh, Ubuntu 2404 operating system. Because uh, Docker as is depends on 100 Go deb packages. And uh, then it will be harder for us to maybe uninstall 100 deb packages if we use the official packages from Ubuntu. Okay. So docker.com, let's find the instructions on installing Docker. Why not install Docker desktop, the default offering that um, Docker provides for Ubuntu? Let's see where the download link is. Download Docker, get started. The default offering for Linux is the Docker desktop for Linux, which is gratis if uh, you don't, uh, you're not an enterprise with 250 employees or more and uh, more than 10 million USD annual revenue. So I qualify for a free gratis non-paid subscription. I'm not going to use it this time. I'm not going to use Docker Desktop for Linux because that requires a virtual machine. And I'm not sure if maybe the Docker containers themselves will be run in a virtual machine. I'm not sure what, uh, what that entitles or if just the management graphical user interface applications are hosted in this uh, virtual machine. So let's go with the previous better option, which was 
to install the Docker engine or Docker CE. So we go get started. In here we select uh, not Docker desktop but Docker engine. And uh, the instructions are for the Ubuntu family of Linux operating systems, these instructions. Okay, as far as I'm aware, UFW is uh, disabled. Let me check. So I become super user and uh, the command line UFW status, which uh, manages the firewall, says that the firewall is inactive. This is a computer that's not exposed on the internet. It's in the local area network. So there's not a problem if I don't have a firewall on the Ubuntu 2404 machine. Okay, Ubuntu 2404 LTS is supported. And now it says that we should uninstall other dev packages that are not from docker.com. So let's run this command line. It says apt um, remove and then a list of packages. The computer is pretty clean. No Docker was installed previously. Then it says that we should look for um, maybe you already have some Docker container storage images, etc. in uh, varlib Docker. There's no such directory slash var slash lib slash docker. What about container D? There's no container D. And no Docker. So nothing to delete. Next, we are uh, being told that Docker engine is part of the Docker desktop and that's the better supported um, offering from docker.com. So Docker desktop for Linux, we're not going with that. And we're setting up Docker engine from the Docker's apt repository. Let's have these instructions side by side with uh, the instructions from Vulture. Okay, so it says apt update, uh, install CA certificates and curl. This thing. Let's actually run all of these commands. So it does apt update to download the latest um, data about packages available in the remote uh, dev repositories. Curl was already installed, CA certificates were, was already installed. I'm not sure what it did next. Let's run these commands again. So it um, creates a directory slash etsy slash app slash keyrings and in there it creates a file docker.asc which is the file downloaded. This is the chmod uh, and it does an additional chmod. OK, 
Okay. Then inside of slash etsy slash app slash sources dot list dot d, we'll create a new file which is named docker dot list. Let's actually look at the content of that directory. So there's the main file which is ubuntu.sources and then additionally there's uh, lists which contain one web repository each for Visual Studio Code, for Firefox and for the web browser Google Chrome. Let's see now. So a new file was added, docker.list. Which says deb noble, which is Umoto 2404, stable, and um, the URL. I'm not sure why it's uh, using apt minus get instead of using apt because the oldest supported version of Ubuntu is 2004 which probably already had the apt executable not only the apt minus get executable. Okay so now the deb repository has been added the metadata list of packages available in that repository has been downloaded locally. You can see it in here. And now we can start installing packages. So it installs docker engine, this one, minus CE, command line tool, engine, and uh, the compose plugin. apt install docker c, docker ccli, container d, build x plugin, compose plugin. And additionally, it installs the rootless extras pig z slurp for net ns. Big Z Slurp for Net NS installed from Ubuntu URL and the rest from Docker.com URL. Okay. So the command lines that we saw until now have this um, dollar sign prepended which means that you should run these command lines not as the linux user root but as another user a user that um, is sudoable otherwise it would have used a um, pound hash sign which signifies that you should run this command line as the Linux user root. So let's uh, stop being root, control D, and run the command which install, downloads and installs, or downloads the first Docker image for um, the hello minus world container, and then starts that container. The instructions from Vulture are uh, a bit different. Simpler, but uh, maybe not as complete. Okay. 
it says that uh, Docker is not enabled yet, the um, systemd service. It is. Yeah, so don't um, use the unofficial instructions if the official from docker.com command line instructions work correctly. Let's see what um, running the first container looked like. So the image, container image named hello minus world with a tag latest did not exist on the local computer, was downloaded from the container registry from Docker Hub. The image operations and registry operations are similar to Git version control. They have a um, SHA-256 digest. Use words such as pool. And this is the image being downloaded locally. And then from inside the Docker, we got this uh, standard output. Hello from Docker. This message shows that your installation appears to be working correctly because the command line that was run was Docker run hello world. It immediately exits because that's the way the image is created of hello minus world to just write this to standard output and then exit. If you want to continue running, the command line is docker run space minus it. And then if there's a, um, if there would be another executable inside of the container besides hello world, a REPL, read evaluate loop, a Unix shell, you could run that. This example is bash. Okay, so Docker works correctly. It says that the next steps are to be found in the documentation page Linux post install. Let's go there. In here it says that um, Docker runs rootless root full containers. So you require root Linux user privileges when running Docker. But there is a special Linux user group which is called Docker, which if you add the current user to that group, then you can run the Docker command lines without always appending, prepending sudo to all of the Docker command lines. Let's do what it says in here. So we should create the Linux user group Docker. We should add our user to the So the user was not added to the Docker user group. Let's add it. The user will not actually be effectively added to this Linux user group until we reboot the computer. Okay, so the next step is to reboot the computer and then we'll run the groups command line. And this time Docker will be an additional Linux user group, which my current user, Linux user, is a member of. You can run the following command to activate the changes to groups. 
Yeah, or we could do this instead of rebooting. Instead of rebooting, we can run this command line. And let's now check. Oops. And now the Linux user is member of the Linux user group Docker. Now we can run Docker command lines without prepending Docker in front of them. And it works correctly. Okay, then says that uh, the Linux operating systems in the family Debian and Ubuntu, when you install the deb packages, the system D services for container D and Docker are automatically enabled. So when you reboot the machine, they will be started and also started automatically. So the equivalent of sudo system ctl enable space minus minus now docker.service and containerd.service is done automatically by for you when you install the dev packages from the docker.com repository. And then it says that the by default the standard output and standard error from the containers, so when you run the containers, is being concentrated on the host operating system as JSON files. And this might be a problem if proper log rotation is not uh, enabled for um, JSON minus file. So let's do that if needed. So Docker captures the standard output and standard error of all containers, writes them as JSON files with a timestamp type of stream. And uh, next up, we should look into slash Etsy Docker. So let's go there. The slash Etsy Docker is empty. And um, it's okay if the file does not exist. We'll need to create it. Okay, let's create it with nano. The name of the file is daemon.json. And in there we should have these lines. It says log driver json file log options, maximum file size 10 megabytes, and maximum number of files 3. Control X, save buffer Y, enter. Okay. What else can we do? That's about it. That's about all of the Linux post install instructions. Let's now run some Docker command lines just to get familiar with uh, Docker. Similar to virtual machines, there's many concepts when you say Docker, there's a ton of concepts involved. Um, Linux containers will be a synonym to Docker's. There's images which are similar to VMDK or v virtual machine uh, hard disk files or QCOW2 files in QEMU. VMDK would be virtual hard disk uh, files in, uh, in uh, VMware. Okay. That is called a Docker image or a container image. And then there's the 
similar to a virtual machine running, then there's a container running. You can list running containers, you can also list container images. There's totally different things. So container images is one file, whereas running containers are um, similar to a virtual machine that's running. So it's a tree of processes and associated resources. You can start them, stop them, etc. Let's continue following the Docker workshop. It says that you should have Docker, you should have Git, you should have an integrated development environment, and we have Visual Studio Code. We should clone this uh, repository. So git clone github.com slash docker getting started up. Let's look at the contents of the repository. CD getting started up. Entry. You should see the following files and subdirectories. Docker ignore. Tree is not showing hidden files. There's git ignore parameters to three. Wow. Probably this um, minus A parameter. Okay, like this. So 3 minus A shows the directory structure, so files and directories recursively starting from the current directory in this case because I gave no parameter. It says that at, to at top level there's a dot docker ignore file. Then there's a package.json, readme.md, spec directory, src directory, and finally yarn.lock. We will use Docker in order to build the file. Okay, so where is package.json? in the top level directory. Okay, so in here we need to create a file, a Docker file. How will we create it using Visual Studio Code? My operating system is Linux Git Bash. Ah, so it's uh, now it's uh, running the commands. Okay, so we already changed into the getting started up directory. Now we should create an empty Docker file. Okay, let's edit it. 
and we'll copy paste. So it says that it should download from the default Docker image registry, which is Docker Hub, the image for the container node, which is for the programming language and runtime JS node. And from there, it should use the version 18 minus Alpine. Then there should be a slash app directory inside of the running container. Should copy the current directory inside of that slash app directory. Inside of that app directory should run the package manager yarn to install all of the needed uh, Node.js dependencies, probably hundreds of them. Then it will uh, run the command line node space src slash index.js. This will probably never exit. We'll start a web server and that web server is going to expose, be exposed over port 300 on the host machine. Okay. Build the image. So Docker build and um, the tag of the image. Human readable name for the final image. Okay, so the Git repository is named getting started minus app and the image that we're going to create and is going to be available on the local machine is going to be named getting minus started. So it downloaded uh, from uh, Docker Hub, docker.io, the resources for node colon 18 minus Alpine. It has created the directory slash app, copied the current directory there, run yarn install production, created an image and wrote it uh, wrote the image to the local machine. Okay, next up we're going to create uh, to run a container that uses this image this part and this part docker run and then the name of the image and um, the container exposes port uh, 30,000 for the HTTP server that runs in Node.js and it's going to expose it on the host machine, network interface card, localhost, 127.0.0.1 IPv4 address on port 3000. So this is the port rule and this is detach such that uh, it runs daemon style, doesn't uh, occupy the current um, terminal. Let's see the list of running uh, containers. So 
So it's um, there's just one running Docker container right now. Started from the image getting started. The container was not provided a name when I ran the command Docker run. So Docker has invented an interesting name for the running container. And this is the name determined underscore buck. There's this uh, TCP port rule. And um, we can connect to port 3000 on 127. 001 Okay And it's a um, application that contains items So it's a to-do list. Let's mark this task as done and delete the final item. Okay, now we should edit the source code where it said uh, no to do items yet. And here, this text, add one above. We should edit uh, the source code. Okay, doc, uh, where are you? Load dot Control Shift F this text You have no to do items yet. Save the file, Control S, and now we can uh... okay, great. It's interesting that it said that we should uh, edit the source code and then generate a new image and then start a running container from that image because the container is already running and it's backgrounded in here minus D. But then it says that uh, this way we're going to observe the error when we start the same um, container uh, or two containers uh, with different names but uh, listening on the same TCP port 3000. Okay. So docker build minus t getting started dot. All of these uh, layers inside of the image that do not need to be redownloaded because they're cached already, so available in the on the host computer. Copying needed to be done this part and. Um,
the image is now available. Let's start a second container instance on the same TCP port 3000 on localhost network interface card. Port is already allocated. Okay, let's look at the list of running um, Docker instances. It's only the first one, the second did not manage to start. Determined underscore buck. Okay, now we're going to stop it. Docker remove. So the container instance determined back was running. Now we have stopped it, but it continues to exist. It's just in a stopped state. We can start it anytime back. What we're doing now is we're removing the Docker container. We're keeping the image that we started the container from, which is getting minus started, but we're deleting all of the container instances that use this image, which is just one, the first one. In order to both stop and remove, we can go docker uh, remove docker rm minus f to force um, removing a container even if it's running. Okay, the exact same command that we already ran twice. docker run minus d to detach the current uh, console and then port uh, the port rule and getting started the name of the image. Okay, let's see what name has the newly started and running Docker in, Docker container. And his name sharp underscore Goodall. You have no to do items yet. And previously the text was uh, shorter. So the new text is uh, displayed in the web browser now. Okay, next up um, we've shown how to use another uh, value added uh, service from docker.com. So the first one was Docker Desktop. If um, you cannot use the gratis version, you need to have a subscription in order to use Docker Desktop. Another value added uh, service provided by docker.com is their um, registry where you can, uh, where you can uh, store private container images. So container images that uh, only you and your organization can download from the Docker, Docker Hub uh, Linux container image registry with a Docker push command. Next up, database. Each container has its crash space. You want to have uh, 
a bit of storage inside of the running Docker container instance that uh, is readable or read writable from the host. Or maybe vice versa, you want to have a uh, file system on the host that's accessible from the Docker instance, or maybe you want from a one Docker instance to have data storage, persistent storage uh, available and accessible from another running Docker instance. There's container volumes, the minus V command line parameter to Docker. There's a Docker volume command line which manages uh, the Docker volumes available on the hardware machine, on the host machine. When you start the uh, instance of uh, Docker with Docker run command, you have the command line parameter minus minus mount and type volume. And this time we will see that uh, the list of to do items will be kept even if, for instance, we edit the JavaScript source code, rebuild the image, stop the previous container instance, and create a new container instance from the newest image. Docker volume inspect in order to look at um, the volume. So this is it. It's uh, as you saw, installing was uh, simply just following the instructions from Docker.com. You can clearly see that the instructions have been manually testing tested by um, Docker.com employees. So they really do work correctly on Ubuntu 24.04. And then after once you install Docker C, Docker Engine on Ubuntu 24.04. The official documentation immediately from docker.com immediately takes you to the developer setup so tries to tell you how to use docker as a software developer not how to use docker in order to i know run um, virtualized graphical user interface applications or run multiple instances of um, a web browser or other usages that you would have um, with a virtual machine. With virtual machine you are usually, usually an end user, you want to install an operating system, you want to install some software and to use it. Whereas in here the designed flow is no you should be a software developer a, I don't know JavaScript developer web developer and you're going to use docker in order to deploy your application in order to develop your application in order to have a very similar setup for the developer and for the end users of the application. And it has all of those concepts of layering and uh, image layering and um, volumes and uh, the fact that uh, when you start the virtual machine, you start it from Docker Hub, not from your local machine. So the images are going to have the operating system that you specify, but with the very latest updates and security updates applied to the virtual machine, to the um, Docker container image. So at the moment when your app Docker container starts, 
run your application, the stack of software below it, the programming languages, the runtimes, I know Java runtime or what you have in there, Ruby on Rail uh, runtime are uh, have at least the security updates pre-installed and the same for the operating system such that you have a minimal number of software vulnerabilities when your application is running and is exposed on the real internet as a production workload. Thank you.